So the EFM mount is dead, the Canon M50 is gone, anybody who is invested in this APS-C system by Canon is basically going to be left in the lurch. These are rumors that we've heard over and over and over for a number of years for almost the entire life of this camera system. And the latest ones we're hearing, to be honest, they couldn't be more poorly founded and less rooted in any sort of fact whatsoever. And if we look at the evidence, and if we look at the information out there, it's pretty clear that Canon would be crazy to stop building these cameras and this camera mount system. And I'm just gonna give you a list of reasons why, from somebody who's a, a business analyst and a business strategy advisor, of why there's absolutely no way that any time in the near future Canon is going to be killing this camera system. And the first thing I want to talk about is the RF lens roadmap. Now, the latest rumor started after a leak from Canon was the RF lens roadmap. Now, this had all the RF lenses that Canon is looking to develop in the next year or two. And the reason this is a big deal for Canon is because they have just released two R bodies that have really turned their sales around. In a declining camera market, they have sort of defied the trends and they've really kind of saved their hide with those two cameras. So it makes sense that they're going to be developing lenses to go with the cameras that they're getting the best sales out of right now. The important thing to understand is those two cameras we're talking about are three, four thousand dollar cameras. The lenses in the RF system cost thousands of dollars, most of them. Although there are a couple of cheaper ones, most of them are thousands of dollars. And even some of the cheaper lenses in this system cost more than the entire Canon M50 kit put together. So we are talking about a completely different system when we're talking about the RF lenses and the R cameras and the EFM mount and the M cameras. These are not even competition with each other. And the reason that roadmap did not have any EFM glass or EFM development on it is because it was an RF roadmap. It was not a development map for the EFM mount. Now, the other thing that we hear is, well, the Canon hasn't released any new EFM lenses in a while. And while that is true, I think what we have to do is look at the current lens lineup and keep in mind who these cameras are targeted at. If you look at the current EFM lens lineup, you've got your 1122, very good wide angle. You have got an 15 to 45 and an 18 to 55. Those are great mid-range zooms. You have an 18 to 150, which is your all-purpose do everything zoom. You've got a 55 to 200, which is your telephoto zoom, take on vacation, take to the zoo, mini safari, what have you. You have three good primes. You have the 22 millimeter F2, which is an excellent prime lens and it's Canon's smallest lenses. And to me, you could almost buy this whole camera system just to actually own that one little lens. You've got the 28 millimeter F3.5 macro lens. So you've got macro covered. It's a clever little lens. Also has a little light on the end. It was one of the first lenses ever developed to do that. And you've got the 32 millimeter F1.4, which is an excellent portrait lens, street photography lens. And uh, I own a copy of that lens and I actually think it is one of the best lenses I've ever owned. One of the best developed lenses of all time. So when we look at all the lenses in this lineup, and if you consider the average user of an M50 or some of the M3, M5, or the M6, these lenses are gonna cover really everything that they want and for probably 98% of the users. And we often hear, oh, not enough lenses, and I wish they would make more lenses, but whenever I show people my EFM lens lineup, which contains most of the Canon made lenses, as well as uh, some third party lenses, the first thing anybody says is, what do you need all those lenses for? So I think this idea that there aren't enough lenses is kind of nonsense, particularly when you take into account the, all the third party lenses that are available as well. So for the people that are using these cameras, the lens lineup is more than sufficient and there's more lenses there than the average user is ever going to buy or need. So the other thing we hear is, you know, Canon came out with this Canon M50 Mark II, which to be honest was kind of a joke. There really weren't any upgrades. It was a firmware update. In, in essence, it's the exact same camera with some webcam features and, and a few other little things. But really, people are looking at that and going, wow, they've stopped development of this camera. This is it. The system's all done. But I think importantly, we need to look at the M50, which is 
possibly Canon's best-selling mirrorless camera of all time. In fact, I would almost say for certain. Canon doesn't release these numbers, but I would almost bet anything that the M50 is Canon's best-selling mirrorless camera of all time. And we've got to compare that camera that was released in 2018 to its biggest competitor. And that is the Sony A6000, released in 2014, four years earlier. And when you look at the two, the Canon M50 still beats the A6000 hands down. And beyond that, it's cheaper. So when you look at the market that the M50 is competing in, it, it doesn't really have much competition. And this is why there's so many of them out there. Whether you're going to Best Buy or looking on B&H and you're doing your research, so many people come to the conclusion that the M50 is the best value camera and they continue to come to that same conclusion. So they really have no reason to push more technology in the M50 at this price point. And when we talk about the development of new EFM glass, something that we need to note is Canon has already announced that they are no longer developing new EF glass. Now that's their full frame glass for their old DSLR system. So they made a big announcement that they were moving away from EF development and they were moving to fully RF development. That was their plan. This was a huge shift and quite a big deal. And I was actually surprised that they came out and made this announcement. Now. They made that announcement moving between those two camera systems and those two lens systems. They're seeing R and RF mount as the future. No such announcement was made about the M mount and the FM glass. And I think given that they were willing to go out on a limb and make such a big announcement uh, about probably the biggest lens library in the history of lenses, the EF mount, the fact that they haven't said anything about the EFM mount means that they're just probably letting it bubble along the surface and keep going. It's not going to be the one they're pushing, like the RF mount, because that's where all the money's at. But it is one that is a huge seller for them, and it would not make any sense for them to cancel that lens lineup at this stage. Additionally to this, we need to talk about the size of the mount and the size of the sensor. Now, previously, Canon had the APS-C size sensor and they made some EFS glass, and this was in the 70D, 80D, eventually 90D, but those systems were all restricted by the size of the EF mount, meaning you could only make the camera so small because the EF mount was a certain size, and that is the size of the part that goes onto your camera when you connect the two together. Now, the idea that we're hearing that they might stop making the EF mount and the M system, the idea would be that they would transition everybody, those entry-level shooters, onto the RF mount. The problem with that is, is the RF mount is larger, which means that Canon would have to leave behind the idea of a small mirrorless camera. If they move on to a strictly RF mount, that restricts the size that the camera can be, and now there is no more small entry-level mirrorless cameras. Now importantly, if you look at somebody like Sony, they actually have the same mount for their full frame and their APS-C. But this has been a huge problem for Sony because the mount is quite small. That allows them to make smaller APS-C size sensor cameras. But if you look at their glass, the really big high quality lenses really taper in at the end in a way that you really don't see from most camera systems. And the reason they have to do this is you've got this full-size, full-frame sensor sort of squeezed in to this tiny little mount. And so the lens has got to bring the light in and kind of bend it around that small mount and get it onto the sensor. So that has been a challenge in their development of lenses. And if you look at the Canon RF mount, they made a point to make that thing absolutely huge. And they did that and it just makes it easier for them to develop high, uh, higher quality glass and, and that's fine. But it does restrict the minimum size that they can make the camera body and the lenses. So canceling the M series cameras and stop developing EFM mount glass means that we would only have bigger cameras. They would be abandoning the small mirrorless camera market completely. And in addition to all this, we have to talk about the price. If you look at Canon's current offerings, their RF mount lenses and their R cameras, even the EOS RP in a kit with a lens still ends up being double or more what the current M50 is. 
This is a pretty significant difference. If they're going to get rid of these EFM glass and the EOS M system, it means to be able to compete in that market, they're going to have to make an R camera that is the same price as the M50 or even the M100. Now, Canon isn't known for sabotaging their own market segment. And they really like to stretch things out. The idea that they're going to let somebody get into the RF system anytime soon at the same price point as, say, an M200 or an M50, that's just not the way Canon does things. That seems highly, highly unlikely. And I think when we think about all this stuff and whether Canon is going to kill this system, we really have to keep in mind, we are potentially talking about the best-selling mirrorless camera of all time in the Canon M50. In one of the, if not the hardest camera markets the world has ever seen. If you are a big business, from a business person or a business strategist position, there's no way on earth you stop making your best-selling camera or some upgraded version of that in this sort of market. It doesn't make any sense. Anyways, that was my say. Time will tell whether I'm right or not. Thank you for watching. And if you're interested in the Canon M50 or any of the lenses or cameras in this system, I've got pretty much all of them. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and I'm gonna be putting out a bunch more content about this system and I will keep you updated on the Canon news surrounding the EFM and the M series cameras.